G'day guys, my name's Ira Taz and this is Doug, my 2017 Royal Enfield Classic 500. For this video, it's important that you know that this is an EFI UCE. This would not be the same for a 350 or a carbureted engine or the old iron barrel Royal Enfield engines. This is a video about spark plugs and it's a good, better, best video and comparison but bottom line is that Doug comes standard with a Bosch WR7 DD C4 plug that's made in India these plugs are renowned to cause issues in the international market on this bike uh, it's probably meeting a price point supporting the domestic market because these engines and these bikes are made in India but I cannot recommend enough to ditch that plug and replace it with a better quality Japanese NGK. This plug in my experience causes rough idling, hesitation, uh, stuttering and it when you pull them particularly after riding around town the plug is sooty it's the wrong colour uh, so I would strongly recommend that you ditch that plug and initially replace it with a NGK, a Japanese made plug, BP6ES. I found two of these online, eBay, for $14.95 from a lawnmower shop in New South Wales, but I also saw them in super cheap auto and they were about $9.80 roughly each. So it's not an expensive addition. If you put that plug in, gap it to 0.7 from my experience, but the manual suggests between 0.7 and 0.8 millimeters for this plug. You'll find that that's about the correct gapping for this plug. It will remove a lot of those problems. This is brand new. I bought it as a spare but you can see that it's the BP6ES gapped ready to go it will run at the correct colour particularly if you're riding around town it takes out the stuttering and hesitation that the Bosch plug causes it's a much more free revving bike whilst it doesn't provide any extra horsepower it sort of feels like it does and it's a much more enjoyable motorcycle to ride then as i was doing some research i found that hitchcox which is a famous british manufacturer of performance and aftermarket parts for royal enfield and other british bikes they recommend a different combination they recommend the ngk BPR6EIX which is an iridium tip plug these are almost twice the price and I would recommend not trying to gap them because you'll remove the iridium from the end so you can see that it's a much much more precision spark completely different shape even to the standard NGK so same heat but just different plug the other thing Hitchcock's recommend is replacing this resistor cap with an NGK non resistor cap this one comes stock on this bike and it's designed for a leaner burn. It's a resistor cap where this is a non-resistor cap. This NGK spark plug, you can get them at super cheap. It was about $25 roughly, but you can also get them online for as little as, uh, it's about $14.95 each if you're willing to wait for the postage. I forgot to mention that this Bosch plug is actually about $17.65 
and you've got to pay postage from India. I couldn't find, uh, in the limited search I did, an Australian stockist for this plug. I imagine if you went to the Royal Enfield dealer, they would be able to supply it, but it was $17 and about the same to get it sent from India. So that is a $34 plug. That is about a $9.80 plug, and it's significantly better. And this is somewhere between $14 and $26, and it's better again. With the recommended Hitchcock's combination, the bike runs brilliantly. It takes away all that hesitation and rough idle. Uh, they're the correct colour when I ride around town. Uh, it's a much more free revving bike. It feels, it does not, but it feels like it has more horsepower and it makes it more fun to ride. Uh, I highly, highly recommend it. Spending the 50 odd dollars that you'd need to replace the cap, the lead and the spark plug. Uh, let's jump on, fire it up. I don't normally kickstart the bike, I hate kickstarting bikes, but we'll give it a go. Ignition on. Side stand up. Kill switch engaged. Fuel pump allowed to prime. Kickstart out. Clutch in. Couple of kicks to free up the plates. Fine top dead center. One good kick. Recommended idle for this bike is 1050 plus or minus 200 rpm. On a cold bike like it is, it'll sit at 1080, and then once it's warm, it will consistently sit at 1200. I found the warm bike revving at 1050 was a little bit low, so I deliberately set it to idle as a warm motorcycle at 1200. You can hear the instant throttle response. No hesitation, no stuttering, no spluttering, perfect guys. I would highly, highly recommend that you go out and grab that Iridium plug and that NGK non-resistor cap. But if you can't afford that, at least get the middle plug because it will remove a lot of the problems for your Classic 500 EFI UCE. Sorry for the wordy technical video, but guys, my name's Taz. I'll see you next time. I'm out.